to start a month ago, I was um, I was really preparing to die. I um, I had three years of hell with this disease or condition that I have called trigeminal neuralgia, and it gives you uh, electrical charges. So if if one could imagine, I, I like to say what it, trigeminal neuralgia is like is taking a uh, ice pick, an electrified ice pick, and sticking it in your ear into the middle of your brain, it debilitated my life. I could not think, I could not write, I could not read. I My vision was distorted. Um, I couldn't do normal things that we do every day to live well. For two and a half years, um, I didn't know, we didn't know what was wrong with Wendy. She had She'd have these episodes, these headaches. We thought they were just headaches. We'd, um, she'd try all kinds of things to take the pain away. Eventually the pain would get so bad, we'd go to the emergency room. And this is, this is horrific for me because I'm a professor, I'm a teacher, I'm a relationship coach. I work with people all the time and to me the worst ever pain in the world would be that I can't talk to people. I can't relate. It's my whole work in the world. And it was totally gone. But it took, a, it was a long time. We didn't know what it was. The first time it happened was in Hawaii, Kauai. And that, that, it was the first time I've ever heard a doctor say, I actually don't know what's wrong with you. You know, that the way, that I couldn't do life, so everyone had to do it for me. So this venture of this trigeminal neuralgia was like the trip to a living hell. Uh, or I'd like to say the living dead. It was like I had a body, but I couldn't do anything with it because anything I did, chew, talk, move, exercise, uh, too many bright lights or sound problems, too loud, would send the pain and it would aggravate the pain. So it got worse when I tried to do daily living activities. Just getting dressed was a huge uh, affair because the longer I did things, the more the pain would get. So I'm, I'm expressing the, the, the very horrific nature of this suicide condition. First has an episode, it, she would take it, the pain for about four or five days and, and she would um, be able to handle it, even though it was painful. Then after that, it just would seem to get to her. And that's when she would start to figure out how to drug herself so heavily with painkillers, with the, mostly the painkillers they would give her that we knew weren't going to touch the nerve pain, but at least it would knock her out so that she didn't have to feel this pain. I got home, I started to go to every practitioner I could, neurologists. I went through probably everything neurology in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to try to find what uh, this was. To the fifth or fifth, sixth day, she would just try to lay in the, in the bedroom with the lights very dark all the, the drapes down and she would try to not move and not do anything. So it literally was like she was just a zombie in the bed. November 4th, I'll never forget that day, November 4th, 2016. I was back in the ER with the pain, with the getting ready to get their cocktail. And I said, I need you to go get my doctor house. If you have a doctor house, I need, somebody needs to, this isn't, you're treating me for things that are not right. They put me through every kind of MRI, CAT scan. I have had every kind of test, been poked, prodded, and every kind of, they give, uh, uh, you know, and then the migraine drugs, which did nothing for me. And so I'm in the ER and I tell them to go get the doctor house. I said, I don't want you to give me any tests till I talk to your doctor house. And they says, who's that? And I explained who Dr. House is. I want the doctor who wants to get to the bottom of this with me and is willing to walk with me to find the solution. Living with this condition that you never know when it's going to hit, how intense it's going to be, or how long it's going to last, makes your life totally uncertain. And so she left the room, came back with my Dr. House. He walked into the room, he says, ma'am, we're not going to put you through. He looked at my medical records, isn't that fascinating? And he saw all the tests I'd done and failed. And he goes, he came into the room and he told my, my partner, he said, I want you to go on your smartphone and look up trigeminal neuralgia. She did and she looked at the, the condition and the symptomology of it. She starts crying. 
She says, she goes, you, I found the name. We have a name. This is it. And I start crying. We're both crying. You know, there's something about when you know you have a name for it that you could actually address it. So then we spent the last year looking at for general neurology, what I could do. My neurologist and then my primary care doctor said, you need to go to Mayo. So in one sense, we were totally relieved that there was a, a name for it. But then on the other hand, going, you know, starting to read about it and realizing lots of people have this, but it's very painful. It's the most painful thing, condition known uh, to man. They're not sure if there's any kind of cure for it. Gift of Mayo is they know the pain of trigeminal neuralgia is real and how awful it is. And so they do have some surgical techniques they can do to help alleviate pain for periods of time. Uh, and so I went for it. And uh, they went into my head and thank God they did. It didn't solve my trigeminal neuralgia because sorry to report, my pain returned on November 18th. This was two months after the surgery. And so, as you can imagine, when I, when the pain was back, when it came back that day, I'll never forget November 18th. Mm. I, I was, uh, mm. because that was my last hope. And that was my last hope. So all I was left with is I'm gonna die. The only way I can is just, just choose to stop eating and drinking that the disease day by day was just sucking the life out of her. And so, you know, we both know, know we respect each other's decisions there. So I had to respect her decision, even though it felt, it felt devastating, knowing that the disease was winning too. So I got ready to do that. And I filmed the film for my family so they could hear from me why I chose and what I've gone through. Told them the story similar to what we're doing now so they would understand why I couldn't no longer be on the planet because uh, it's not worth living this way. No one should have to live this way. You know, beyond sad and uh, devastated. And I understood because I'd seen her, her go uh, deteriorate and really all she was doing was laying in a dark bedroom, trying not to move so that the pain wouldn't come. I was at a total loss and then I started to prepare to die. I'm just going to die. I can't live this way. When my friend uh, Mary insisted, you have to talk to my friend Maya <laughs> and, and you have to go see Dr. Howe and one more thing of hope. Maybe. Okay, I'm still living. So I went and I I just trusted, you know, I, needles weren't fun. I, I was like, okay, you can put needles in my head. You know, traditional acupuncture doesn't work for me. I said, I'm going to do it again. Um, I've just got to believe because I had to believe Maya because Maya had been healed in doing this work, right? So I said, okay, Maya got healed, I could get healed too. Um, and so, rate of hope, I go in and, well, story's over, in my opinion. I had one week, first treatment, two days, pain-free. <laughs> if you've been in pain like that, a pain-free day, it's like going to heaven. I mean, it was like paradise. I still couldn't do my work that first week, but I didn't have pain for two days. So I got two days. The next week, I got five days. And the next week, no pain. How, how does that happen? And I'll never forget, sitting in my hotel room, listening to Wendy, and by the first, with the first hello, I heard life back in that voice. And, and it, you know, it hit me. I, I, and at the same time, I thought, wow, can this be this fast? Can this? Work this well, just one treatment. So uh, I am so uh, appreciative of the house and their determination to bless as many people as they can with this healing, uh, to take it all over the world, to get practitioners trained all over the world, to uh, give this the hope that I now have 
the, you know, I mean, I still have some of the PTSD and we're continuing to do treatments to work on that because I've been sh shocked for three years. So there's the tendency to not believe that this will last uh, at some times. And uh, so I'm walking into the believing of, yes, this can be my everyday again, but I can only do it because of the house. I can only do it. So they're like angels to me. Or I think just before she went to the Mayo Clinic, and then I saw her a few months after she came back from the Mayo Clinic, and we talked for a while, we were in the same meeting, and I asked her how it was, and she was a little hesitant. She said, so far, okay, because the pain had not come back yet. I have great friends who care about me, and so my friend Mary heard that I was getting ready to choose not to eat or drink over all this and the pain I'd been through, and she'd been walking with me through this for three years. But she had a good friend, Maya Sutton, who edited Dr. Howe's book. I feel when I found that she wanted to end her life, uh, that's when I stepped in because it was no longer okay to just keep saying to our mutual friend, try to get her to acupuncture, try to get her to Dr. Howe, try to get her to try acupuncture. You got to talk to Maya, and then Maya talked to me about Dr. Howe, and she says, you've got to go and you've got to get in there. And so thank God for Maya. She got me in. In two days, I was in Dr. Howe's office, and wow. She has to go see Dr. Howe because she's already tried the brain surgery, and it didn't, a little bit work, but it didn't stop the pain. And I said, I've had three nerve conditions that Dr. Howe has straightened out, stopped, improved, you know, I'm free of those, pay, that pain now, she needs to go see Dr. Howe. And I tried traditional acupuncture three times to try to deal with this and it didn't shake a thing. It didn't do a thing. So when, my, when Maya says go to another acupuncturist, although now I know the difference between traditional acupuncture and scalp or neural acupuncture, very, very um, different, uh, my understanding now. And, uh, but he, put those needles in my head in 30 minutes. I was at a level 9, 10 pain, came down to one to two in 30 minutes. Now for me, after I've told, you know, if I tell you what I've been through in pain and all the pain I was living in, to have that happen to me in three, just 30 minutes, I was healed. I, I, I mean, I was having a healing. I was being made whole, you know, and and uh, I never thought I'd live again. I mean, and that's how bad that was. I was, I was ready to die. And finally I said, she has to go to Dr. Howe and use my name, get in as fast as you can. And she did have her first appointment. And I think for the first 30 minutes, she was pain free and she had had pain every 20 seconds. So she already could see that it was working. So I can't, I don't know how to express my gratitude. Um, for the gift of neuroscalp acupuncture and the hows, I call them the heart of how, <laughs> the heart of these incredible doctors who see the pain and they know how to uh, relieve it and, and make, make us whole, make us whole. And uh, so we can be our best in life and I can be my best in life now because of them. And so I, I am just, I'm filled with gratitude and total appreciation.